children's scripts. All right, so the idea behind this video is to show you the manipulation of children based upon scripts. Um, let's say I take this for example. I have two objects, but if I make this one a child of the other object, right? And if I wanted to attach a script to just cube, but have it actually manipulate blade. Okay, I want to show you how that works because if we start knowing how to manipulate children via scripts, we don't have to have scripts on every, like, let's say bones. Yeah, let's say we have scripts on uh, all over this character. We want one script to rule them all in some cases. In some cases. Uh, in fact, I'll take that in some cases to being uh, when I lay out that 2D uh, soldier character. You know, I probably will put the scripts on his arm still because it's just so convenient. Um, but if it was a lerp situation, I, you know, since there's only one bone that rotates, it would be easier to have a, a parent-child script. But since there's two arms, I would say it would be easier to attach the scripts via the arms instead of just having it on the player. So that's what I mean. Manipulate one object, this becomes handy. Manipulate two objects, pain in the butt. Okay. So here we go. We're going to make a small script in here. And with everything, I just want to make some examples. Child control. Okay, so there we go. Here's a child control. I'm going to edit it. And then I'm going to bring up my example on my other computer so I can kind of type from it. And it looks a lot like this. First off, we have to load uh, the idea that the child exists. So now you're going to see what a private variable is. So a private variable stays in here, and that's it. So private variable blade. It doesn't go outside any functions, any scripts. It stays right here. Okay, and all objects are game objects. So there's a game object out there somewhere. And I'm going to have to write a function start. So I'm going to copy this. Just like that. And I lowercase this because that way it stays lowercase in the script, but I know the difference between blade and blade. So right now it's a private variable, has nothing to do with blade whatsoever until I write the next little code. Blade equals a game object. Period find. Very cool little thing that allows me to go in to that character and find um, cube, which is the first parent, the master parent, and then hits child, which is blade, just like that. So now I can control blade based upon cube. So as a test, you know, down in function update, just to play around with this, uh, now blade has relevant sense. Instead of game object, it becomes blade. Okay, blade, period, transform. Let's tell it's transform node to do something. Let's tell it to rotate. And let's say it rotates, not an X, but it rotates in Y. And so it's smooth, we times delta time, and not in Z either, so we put a zero, 
just like that. All right, and then we save that out and we attach this child control to cube. And what that does is now you can see it's not on blade, it's on cube and I hit play, it'll rotate. Very cool stuff. And it's still taking down my life because it's an evil cube. I wonder what happens if I assign it a rigid body. So let's assign that a rigid body and find out what's going on. And it's probably going to fall down. Yep. and still rotate around. Nice. So that's how it's done. Pretty sweet, I must say. It's a very easy way to make that happen because when that is now in our control, it doesn't matter uh, how robust the character gets. We can always put scripts on just one character instead of 15 elements of that character. All right, so that's it for this video. On to the next video.